Hello, humans. Guess what I got in the mail? I'm actually really excited about this. Um, so obviously this isn't brand new. I did end up picking this up secondhand, but new in box. Um, I traded it for a knife that I ended up making. This is a QSP penguin with the brass handle. Which I'm, I actually don't own a penguin. I've played with penguins before, but I've never owned a penguin. Uh, so I am pretty excited about this. So the guy I got this from um, owns a small retail store. And one of the things that they carry, obviously, is penguins or QSP knives. And he says that he got this one here damaged in shipping. So he couldn't resell it, but it was more expensive for him to ship it back. So he ended up trading it to me uh, for a knife that I made which is just kind of cool of him, you know? So this is a QSB. Immediately, I'm actually really liking this box. This feels like recycled cardboard. It has that sort of um, pulp feel to it. If you've ever made your own paper, that's a wild sentence. But if you've ever made your own paper, you know that kind of like rough pulpy feel you get if you don't overly, re if you don't refine it enough? That's kind of what this feels like, which is super duper cool. I'm hoping it does mean that it's recycled, but I do not know for sure. Yeah, look at that. You can actually see. Oh, well, it's not showing up on camera as well. But you can see there's a couple of different colors and it looks very, very pulpy. Like this looks like unrefined paper, which is kind of cool. Immediately we have stickers. QSP, Better Knife, Better Life. Uh, I'm assuming that's... QSP names a lot of their knives after animals and I'm assuming that's one of them, but I can't quite tell which model that is down there. I like stickers. I don't do anything with my stickers. All my stickers are just sitting there. A little bit of foam. I don't like foam the most in packaging, but it is what it is. We have our dog poo bag, branded dog poo bag. Like we're, we're talking high class here. And then we have, oh, oh, that's cute. Again, with the better knife, better life. Have a knife day. QSP penguin with the little hat. Oh, I'd love a little hat like that. That's kind of cool. I got two stickers. I like it when I get stickers. Whew. Okay, okay. Thank you for choosing QSP Knife. We hope you enjoy it. Yo, okay, this is a specs card. That's super duper cool. So if we get close there, copper washer, which I'm assuming is what? Is in the pivot maybe? Must be. 7.2 inches overall length, four inch handle length. 3.6 inch D2 blade. It's got thumb studs jumping on the back. Lanyard hole. It's one inch in height. All of the cool details. That's nice and weighty. Every QSP knife is guaranteed against defects in material and workmanship and has a limited lifetime warranty for specific warranty conditions. Please review QSP knives if you have any questions. Yeah. I'm actually going to keep this little box and the card. I'm not going to keep it any of the stuff that was in it, but I am going to keep the little box because I think it is cool and I wish more companies would do that. Now we have the penguin itself. This is a weighty boy. Like this has a noticeable amount of heft to it, which is, I mean, I got the brass scaled version. Um, that that's, I am more than happy with that. Okay. That's super nice feeling. Not a very drop shutty action. It is absolutely running on washers, but that just flies out super happily. So this is why I got it. That, it looks so good. I'm so happy with the way that this thing looks. Flat brass scales, obviously a stone washed brass and then a uh, coated, and then it looks like a coated and then almost stone washed um, D2 blade, which is super duper cool. Liner lock very well cut out. You can actually see how deep the cutout is, making that access to it super nice, perfectly centered. And then again, just little details, right? The pocket clip actually comes in from the back. It goes between the scale and the liner. Now, if only those two screws were like pocketed or flat or something, but they're not quite there, slightly raised, not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, but you might notice it if you're doing that for whatever reason, right? Like, you, it's not a big deal. And then we have a lanyard uh, space at 
the back, which is actually kind of a cool way of doing it. Normally you see it directly beside the pocket clip as far back as you can get it, because normally with a lanyard you want it to be, you know, fairly far back, but I can definitely appreciate having one that's a little bit further forward. I mean, it's still far enough back, it's not going to make any significant difference, right? So, Ooh, that's nice. I will say, I wouldn't want to have a hand any bigger than mine. Like, my hand as it is, is kind of, this little lip right here is holding my pinky in a lot more than I would have expected uh, looking at it. Like I said, I have played with penguins before, but it has been quite a while since I have. Yeah, it does take a fairly substantial amount of shaking to get that to go in, but it does, it's not, by no means is it an issue. It's been a while since I've had, I actually don't know if I've ever had uh, a washer system that is this nice and easy to flip. That's super duper cool. Anyway, uh, we have a pocket clip. I think it's mostly luck with how it's sitting on me. But despite the fairly aggressive build, like one of that. See how aggressively that comes out. Where it's falling for me is actually in a really good spot where I'm not... I notice it more in a grip like this, where it's kind of poking into my finger. But if you're a little bit less lucky than I am, that's going to be a hot spot. Like that bill is very far. That's an aggressive bill, unfortunately. Okay, we have a almost full height flat grind. Very nicely done. That's super clean. All right, let me grab my piece of paper and we're gonna do some cuts and see how she cuts. That's actually really nice. Yeah. That is a nicely finished edge. Quite sharp. Let's see how refined it is. So this right here is just, oh. There's one little spot right there. There. Yeah. I think it was just a little bit of the burr left over and running my <laughs> thumbnail along it has actually solved the problem. So it must have just been a little tiny bit of the burr left over after sharpening. Fairly normal, not much you can do about it, but now we get into where the penguin truly excels slicing. This is rubber. Oh yeah, that's buttery. Yeah. You don't even notice that it sinks right through it. Gorgeous. Yeah, so no shouldering uh, where the grind tops out. I wasn't expecting there to be any, but it is always good to check and get a feel. I don't think it's going to do very well on this next test. Oops. Uh, this is the puncture test that I like doing. It doesn't have a very... It has... I mean, it's a sheep's foot blade, right? It does not have a very aggressive tip. And it does not, you can see, it'd be more obvious if I do it this way, when it punctures, it's cutting forwards because there's no, like, look at that. You're not gonna be able, that's uh, not as obvious as I need it to be. Everything's too dark. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no edge, there's nothing, no swedge, nothing that's gonna get this to push into an object, right? So your best bet for making a cut is just use the tip and then cut like that. And for that, it's gonna work very well. Most of your puncturing is right here, but if you need to puncture deeper into something, this is not going to work very well, I don't think. Which obviously means that as a self-defense object, it's gonna be suboptimal, but Honestly, a blade of this size, I wouldn't necessarily want it as a self-defense object anyways. Especially not one with this particular handle. Like, this is going to be a very comfortable EDC handle, but because of how well it, it feels like... If you've ever had those statues with a handshake where your hand just fits in there perfectly, but if you try to move your hand out of a proper handshake, it just becomes super uncomfortable. That's how this handle is. It is super comfortable in this grip. There's no other way, really. This isn't bad. 
but there's not very many ways I'm finding to hold this handle where it is comfortable just because that little kick there at the bottom is just that perfect handshake for me so it's going to be really nice holding it like this. Fortunately for me most of the cuts that I make are either like this or like this which are the two grips that are like nice. Uh, draw cuts I imagine are going to be pretty sweet. I'm excited to carry this guy for a bit. It has that nice added weight that you get to it with brass too. Like I like that. I really do appreciate the added weight. And this feels very solid in hand, which I appreciate tremendously. So yeah, uh, I'm going to get some use out of this guy for a couple weeks. I'm going to come back with further thoughts. D2 at the $60 price range, $65 price range, I am more than happy with. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a little bit to give more throw thoughts, but so far I am very impressed with it. Back in a bit. And we are back. So I've been playing with this guy for a couple weeks on and off as I typically do. And I have to say, overall, I'm actually quite impressed with this. There were a couple of negatives that I'm going to get into, one of which is a design problem, one of which is just, it's not really a problem, like it was an easy thing to fix, but it was just an interesting note that kind of annoyed me. Um, Sheep's foot blade. I actually liked it quite a bit. I don't typically go for a straight, straight edge. I normally like a little bit of belly, um, but it handled everything I threw at it quite well. And to that end, I was fairly impressed with it. One thing I will say is that coatings of any type can be a little bit annoying to me. Uh, you can see, oh, hit the camera there. You can see near the tip, the coating is getting rubbed off. It's a lot easier to see in person actually, but the coating is being rubbed off and uh, the reason why is because I was cutting scotch bright, bright pads for a knife so that I could put a finish onto a knife and edge perfectly fine cutting through stuff great didn't even start glinting or anything but the coating started rubbing off which I know all coatings are like that I just I find it a little bit annoying that being said the darker brown brass and uh, the black blade are an aesthetically clean look. I understand why a lot of people like it. I actually like a dark brass with a satin or a polished blade. I think that looks really good, but I can appreciate the dark and dark kind of a thing. Extraordinarily clean feeling. Flipping remained good and consistent throughout, even when the pivot started backing out. So QSP doesn't ship these with a uh, locked pivot. So what would happen is throughout a day or a couple days of use, the pivot would start backing out and it would start just creeping off center. Not the end of the world, and especially just because of how well made the whole thing is, I could literally pinch it and twist it back into place with my thumb. But this did get annoying and I did end up picking up some medium strength Loctite and just Loctiting it. And since I've done that, it stayed centered. That was about a week and a half ago. Uh, and it stayed centered since then. It's been working consistently since then which is quite nice. Uh, let's do some quick size comparisons. Here it is next to the Civivi Chevalier in the Lee Banter. As you can see, it is a little bit smaller than the Chevalier, but it is a little bit bigger than the Banter, uh, putting it comfortably into what I consider to be a medium-sized knife. And it handles like a medium-sized knife as well. It has a tall enough blade that you feel like you're getting quite a bit out of it. And enough edge length that it is quite comfortable to use. Here it is next to the Buck 110. Significantly smaller. And a Zippo. Thickness. It's... A fair amount thinner uh, than the Buck 110, as you can see there, which means it's probably, it is actually, it's a little bit thinner than a Zippo as well. It's pretty comparable though. And even at its widest point, it is slimmer than the Zippo. It does sit fairly wide um, for a knife of this height in the pocket, just because the way that the blade sits when closed, it ends up feeling a little bit wider than it does when it's out, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does take up more pocket space if that is something you are extremely concerned about. I personally am not. Um, 
it's fairly drop shutty. If you really wanted it to drop shut, you could probably take the bearings out and lubricate that, or not bearings, the uh, washers out and lubricate them a little bit. I don't see the value in doing that, so I just left this as is because it was flicking quite nicely for me, and it does close with a, a bit with a little bit of persuasion, but without too too much difficulty. Bearing action is very different from washer action. This has washers. They're nice. Uh, they're very, very smooth. There's not very many knives that I have that I would consider to be super smooth feeling on washers. It's maybe this and like uh, the SOG Fieldcraft or something like that. Fielder. The SOG Fielder that I have, I also think is really, really nice on washers. There's not tons else that I actually really like on washers. Uh, so this is quite impressive in that regard. Like I said, the D2 held an edge great. It felt great consistently the whole time through. Access to the lock bar is very good with the front scale cut down a little bit in order to make that access possible and even more dramatic. A little bit of jimping, a little bit of jimping back here for your thumb. It's all quite nice. Uh, something I think is a little bit interesting. I'm not super surprised by this, but the paint that they're using to paint the scales is actually starting to come off near the back. Now, keep in mind, this is the part, the only part of the knife that will be sticking out of your pocket, even a little bit with this deep pocket, deep carry pocket clip. So it's more than possible. It just kind of got rubbed up against by my apron at work or any number of other things while sitting in my pocket, which wouldn't surprise me too, too much. Now for my number one, only sort of major drawback to this knife, I think that the handle is a little bit too small. Um, typically with a smaller handle, you'll have like a rounded section to round it off and make it kind of accessible to larger hands. But because this right here swoops up to kind of create that hand, like handshake sort of a feel, I actually think it's about an eighth to a quarter of an inch too tight, especially with longer use cutting through more resistive materials like wood or if I was doing lots of cardboard at once. I actually found that this would cut into my pinky a little bit and I found it a little bit uncomfortable, especially towards the end of like a 20, 30 minute session with the knife. Now, everyday tasks, did not really notice it unless I was really bearing down. It wasn't a huge issue, but I am absolutely sitting right on that uh, sort of peak there. So for me personally, it would be nice if it was just a little bit longer. If you have smaller hands than me, even by a little bit, that won't be a problem. And whilst I don't have the biggest hands in the world, I do have large, size large men's hands, right? And that's not work glove size large, that is size large. Yeah. The added heft of having the bra, uh, brass scales is absolutely something that appeals to me personally. I think that it makes a very, very comfortable tool. I have a lot more uh, sort of awareness of where it is and what it's doing because of that weight. There's not very many knives that are so light that I start to feel a little bit flippity about them. Uh, but there definitely are a couple, especially Benchmades. I find that they can actually be so light that I'm not aware of like how they're sitting in my hand really, just because with a loose grip in this, I'm feeling the pressure on my pinky, my ring finger, my middle finger, and my index finger. With a Benchmade, I might only be feeling it on my ring finger and my index finger, uh, which can make it, there's a lot of play that's potentially possible there. Um, which I'm not the hugest fan of. Yeah, overall, uh, I think this is a highly recommendable knife. I think that this is the best entry level experience you are going to get towards um, washers. Like just no question asked. This is the best entry level experience I think you are going to get when it comes to washers. It's a good thumb stud experience. I mean, the thumb studs aren't perfect, but they are quite good and easy to use and they're tall enough to be like reverse flick, thumb flick, slow roll, all of these things are quite easy with these thumb studs, which is quite nice. Very clean aesthetic. It's quite comfortable, uh, according to most people I've handed this to. Again, I find it a little bit uncomfortable just because I find this a little bit cramped for my hand, but it is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, if you're looking for like a one knife solution, I think that the QSP Penguin is a phenomenal example. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the brass version. Like I said, it has a little bit extra heft to it, which is going to be very dependent on whether you like that extra bit of heft or not. I personally do, which means that this is a prime example of a good knife for me. Um, 
but yeah, I do think this is highly recommendable. I would be a little bit cautious if you have larger hands. Maybe don't order it online. Go to a knife shop and get a feel for it. See if this is going to prove to be comfortable or uncomfortable for you. But for me personally, I like it. Seeing D2 in like the 60 Canadian dollar range, I am not upset about by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, overall... I like it. The only thing I will say is it definitely did need a little bit of Loctite in the pivot, just but since I put the Loctite in, it stayed centered the whole time. It's easy to recenter. Um T8. Yeah. T8 pivot, T6 body. Not the end of the world. Uh yeah, I like it. I think it's highly recommendable. I think it's a very, very fun knife and an easy knife to learn on. And if you just need one knife for the rest of your life, the QSP Penguin will be a good example. My only real point against this thing is I wish the handle was a little bit longer, but for most people in the world, it is going to be fine. Stay safe and have fun out there. Peace.